Hello and welcome to another Elite Code problem. So today we're going to be doing problem number 2736, maximum sum queries. And this was the hard problem on yesterday's Elite Code contest. It was a seven point problem, which I haven't seen a seven point problem yet. And I guess for a good reason, this is probably the hardest the hardest um, Elite Code problem I've done so far in my videos and maybe even overall. So uh, if you have a bottle of Advil for the headache you're going to get, and if you're wondering why you're not in a relationship, this is probably why if you're watching this video. So let's get started. You're given two zero index integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, each length n, and then one indexed array queries, where queries i equals xi. So I'll just try to explain it um, simply, kind of what they're doing. And we're going to draw out nums1 and nums2 for this example. So for one thing, it's going to look like this, three, one, two. And really, you can draw it out like this, where this is nums2. And you're going to need pairs. So like you're going to have a pair like this, a pair like this, and so on. You're going to have pairs at the same index when you're actually processing these queries. So the queries for the first one, let's take a look. So we have four, one, we have one, three. And we have two five. And so what they're really asking you for, and let's just have this some output array here. So what they're really asking you for here for these queries is they're saying like for this worst for this first one, you need a number in the first array. Let's call this one, let's call this two. You need a number in the first array that's greater than or equal to four, and a corresponding number in the second array that's greater than or equal to one. And then you want to get the maximum sum of like any any possible combination there. And so what that's going to look like for this is it's going to be there's only one sequence that's possible. It's going to be this because every single other number in the first array is less than four. And so here we have a six. Now for the second one, we're going to want a number greater than or equal to one, which is any number and a number greater than or equal to three. So we're pretty much trying to maximize from here. And then the maximum sum here is this one right here, nine plus one. So that's going to be 10. And then two, five. So we can use this two, three, or four, and a five, and so that's gonna be this one or this one right here. They're both gonna be equal to seven. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so it's gonna be similar, like the second thing is gonna be similar to that, where you have four, four, which there's only one combination, four, five. You have, I guess we could draw it out real quick. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's just go through this example too. And then you should be able to get pretty much what we're doing. So let's do the same thing. We can draw them one under the other again. So two, three, four. And then our queries are four, four, three, two, one, one. Let's put our output over here. Okay, so for four, four, there's only one because this is the only number that's greater than four, so that's nine. For three, two, we have five here and we have nine, so that's nine as well. And then for one, one, we just want any one of these combinations and the biggest is this five, four, so that's nine as well. Okay, and then for this last one, uh, all the numbers in nums one are two and one, but we want numbers that are three or greater, so there is no solution there. And so if you can't satisfy a query, then you just wanna have negative one. So that's kind of like what they're asking for in this problem. Now let's look at the constraints and let's figure out how long that would take. And so the constraints here is the numbers one and numbers two i can go to 10 to the ninth, but the length of each array is 10 to the fifth. So we have 10 to the fifth is our length. And then we also have 10 to the fifth queries. So if we wanted to do like for every query, we just went through the arrays, the complexity of that would be n squared. So that'd be 10 to the fifth times 10 to the fifth, and that would not pass. So we need something that's faster than n squared. We can't really do O of n, I don't think. So we probably need like a logarithmic. And so let's actually simplify this problem down a little bit. And then we can figure out where to go from there. So for these numbers, so let me write down this example one numbers again. So four, three, one, two. And then we have two, four, nine, five. Let me just draw that like this. So I'm going to draw in pairs. And so let's try to. How would we do this if we only cared about like the first part of the queries, right? Like if we only tried to get the first part. So let's say we only tried numbers that were greater than four, numbers greater than one, and numbers greater than two. How would we do this? 
So for one thing, we can recognize that like the order of the when you when you need something greater or equal to or something, you're going to want things that are sorted. And because you're because you're comparing like only the only things you're comparing are like two numbers that are side by side, as long as you sort, but you keep this relationship. So this relationship stays the same. It's going to be fine for your outputs because we're comparing each each like actual cell. So if we sort these and we're going to sort these incre in increasing order uh, for the for the top element. So let's do that. So it's going to look like this. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, nine, five, uh, four, two. And so now if our if our question was how do you get the maximum like pair that had the top value that was index four or more, right? We just focus on that subsection. We ignore the bottom value for now. This query is n2, we don't care about that. Let's just try to figure out how do we get the top value. So what we could do is we can actually, now that these are sorted by the top, we can actually just do a binary search and figure out what are all the valid indices. And then we can like figure it out from there, right? So let's say we could like, we know, okay, we want four or more. So for four or more, that's gonna be anything at this four or more. And for the second one, we want one or more. So our binary search would say, okay, anything, that would be everything in this whole list. And two, we would want this whole thing as well, right? And so that's cool. Like now we know how to at least like get our values a little bit faster. We can binary search to get the exact indices we want. But we still have a problem because like for number one, we would have to still search through the whole thing. So that's a problem. And also we have another problem where just because the top index is valid doesn't mean the bottom index is valid, right? So if we have an index one, we do have a one three. And so um, like this wouldn't be a valid one even though the top one is one. So how do we deal with that situation? And so this is gonna be where it gets it starts to get complicated. What you're actually gonna want is, so we can't sort, like we can sort the top but we can't sort the bottom but we actually can sort the bottom. It's just going to be kind of in a tricky way. And then we can we can also do something with our queries to make it a little bit easier. And then what we can do after that is we can actually get. So what we need to do is we need to get like the maximum from some kind of a sequence. So like, for example, here, let's say these were all the valid numbers. We need to figure out how do we actually get the maximum number from the sequence in linear time or logarithmic time because we can't look through the whole thing. So those are the things we need, and so let's write that down. So A, we need to sort the bottom somehow. Let's actually write this down in smaller font. So sort the bottom. Let's do this somehow. For now, we don't know how, because then we could look through it, and then we could faster find what we need. We also need find a max in linear, or not linear, log time. Let's make this bigger. So we need to, like I said, if we if we go through all of these, all of these, we need to figure out how do we actually get a max value in logarithmic time or or better. And then we also need to figure out. Um, actually, I think that's it. So if we can sort the bottom and figure out like faster how how we can get queries that work, and we can get a max in logarithmic time, then we kind of solved our solution. So for one thing, I can show you how we're going to sort the bottom. So what we're actually going to do is we have this. And then we can get we can get the sum here in linear time, right? So if this is index zero, one, two, three, four, uh, we can get we can get a sum at any index in, in or sorry, it'd be constant time. We can just say like, okay, give me the top plus the bottom, right? So that would be in constant time. But the problem is we need to sort this bottom. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna make another like combination, and it's gonna look like this. So we're gonna have the the whole bottom array here. So nine, five, four, two. Now we are going to also have that with the indices of where it's at. So that's going to be zero, one, two, three. And now we can sort this. So now that we sort this, and even though we sorted this, we still know like where all these are in this array and we can get that in linear time. So if we sort that, what's that going to look like? That's going to look like this. So that's going to be, and yeah, like I said, there's definitely a lot of steps in this problem. So nine, zero, three, two, one. Okay, so now that we actually have these, actually, sorry, made a small mistake there. We actually want them, um, oh, the, these are actually, these do actually happen to be sorted. 
luckily for us. Uh, we actually want them in decreasing order here. And then since we can't actually sort, like I said, so we can't sort them separately. Okay, that's great. But how do we also sort, like we can't sort them together with these. So we still have to figure out, well, how do we go through our queries to make it so this sorted list actually works? And what we can realize from our queries looking at this is, well, our queries, what we can actually do is it, like the order of the queries that we execute the queries in doesn't matter. So we can execute them in any order we want as long as we just maintain what's the index of the query that we executed, right? Because we're going to have our, our result array that's going to be the same length as the queries array and we can execute them in any order we want as long as we just know like where is the index of the query that we used. So what we're actually going to do that's going to be another thing we're going to do is we are going to sort the queries. And so for these queries, what we're going to do is we're going to have another list of these things. And we're going to actually sort these queries in terms of, so that th this is going to be the indices. So I'll show you how this would work for this top one. What we actually want is we want the second value in the query, which is going to correspond to the bottom value. And I'll show you why that's important. So we're, let's say this is one, three, five, and then we're going to want the index for those so zero, one, two. Okay. Now we're going to sort these in also descending order. So that's going to look like this. So for this one, it's uh, simpler, but yeah, so five, three, one, and that's going to be two, one, zero, I believe. So it's backwards. Yeah. Okay. So now that we, we have these queries, what we can actually do, notice that if we start the queries from the biggest number possible, what's that going to mean in terms of like things that we can access? So if we start from the biggest number possible, that means any smaller number is gonna is gonna work so let me show you how that works so we, we need we need one other thing and this is the final thing and this is where we need our data structure and i'm going to show you how this works so this is going to be called a segment tree so let me write that down and i'll explain it briefly but um it's definitely something you want to look into for this problem i'm not going to take too long in explaining it because this is kind of like the union find where if i explained a segment tree in depth it would take like 30 minutes in itself so I'll explain it briefly, but basically what it's going to be is we're actually going to have, so we have four elements here in this. So remember, this is our actual like zip of the nums one and nums two. Yeah, so this is our sorted nums one and nums two combination from this original array in example one. And so our segment tree is actually going to start off being the length of whatever this is, so this is four. So these values are actually gonna be all be negative infinity. And then we're gonna simply unlock these values as we go down the proper, so we're gonna go down this, uh, we're gonna go down these sorted uh, query, like query indices with the with the bottom number. So remember that this 531 is these bottom numbers for the query from this right here. So this is 531, that those are those, and then we have the indices. And so what we're actually gonna do is we are gonna say, so the way we're gonna execute these queries is in this order. And so I'm gonna write down these queries as well. So I think, let's see. So it's 411325. Okay, so 41, and this is how we're gonna do it. So 411325. And so now that we do them in this order, here's here's how we're going to do it. And also we need a, um, let me remember what else we need. Yeah, so this is sorted. So we're going to start, um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have we're gonna have a pointer that points to here to start out. And then remember, this is the bottom value sorted. So we're going to execute the queries in this way. So we're going to go, we're going to check for one. And basically we're going to say, okay, for for one, what we need in this case is, let me just check, uh, yeah. So for four one, so we need the top to be a four or more, and we need the bottom to be a one or more. Uh, is that right actually? No, 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 okay, this is, so this is actually wrong. So this should not be four one one three two five. This These queries should be sorted in terms of the bottom, right? So it should actually be two five, and then uh, one three four one, there we go. So we want to do, we want to execute the queries to make sure that the rightmost uh, like the bottom number is greater to start off, 
and this should be 2513, and that should be 41. Actually, there we go. Okay, so that's going to be 41. Definitely a lot here for sure. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so this is our this is our queries that we're executing, and this is our this is our um, like bottom number sorted up to down, right? So greater to smaller. So we're going to check. We're going to say, okay, so we need a number that's greater than five. We're currently at this nine. And by the way, so these queries aren't actually going to be like this. It's it's going to be instead uh, these these second numbers and then the index in the query array where they're at from this right here, right? So the, this is actually going to be the five is going to come from here. And then this will be the index of where it is in the actual query array. So then we can put the right number in the results. Okay, so we're going to go through this. And what the first number is going to say, okay, for the, and, and since these numbers are biggest to smallest, we're going to say, okay, we need a five in the second part and we have a nine. So does a nine work? Well, yeah, it does, right? Because we need numbers that are greater than or equal to five. So a nine works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check, okay, what is this index of the nine in the segment tree? And then we're going to update that value to be what, what it is in our original array, right? So that's, we have an index here, index zero. So we're actually going to go over here. And we're going to say, okay, what's that sum? So that sum is actually 10. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative infinity. We're going to make this 10. And then we're going to go to the next value. And then we're going to say, okay, so we want a 5. We have a 5. That works too. Okay, let's get the sum. That's at index 1. So that's over here. So that's 2 plus 5. So now this is going to be 7. Now we go over here. We want a 5. We have a 4. Well, that's too small. So we can't, we can't update anything else. So now our segment tree, once we do this first range query, is actually this 10, 7. And then we need one more thing, right? So we, so we do have like the bottom value we want, but we need the top value we want. Like where can we actually search for the top value? Well, for the top value, we want a 2 or bigger, right? So for a 2 or bigger, we're going to actually binary search in here because this is sorted this is sorted, uh, sorted in terms of the top value. So for here we can actually get the top values that are two or bigger. That's going to be all of these. And so this is the range we're going to be searching for in our segment tree. And I'll, like I said, I'll explain a little bit more about the segment tree in a bit. But just imagine our segment tree, what it can do is given a range, given a range of values and anywhere in this, like imagine this is an array for now, given a range, it can get the maximum in logarithmic time. Let's just say it can do that for now. I'll explain a little bit how later. So. We, can, we have to search through all of these values and we are searching for the maximum value. So obviously the maximum value here is a seven, right? And so now let's let's say we do have our result output. So we have a seven and where was that query? Well, that query was at index two. Remember, we, we, we're, we're doing the queries from the biggest number on the bottom to the smallest and we also have the index where it was at. So we're gonna put a seven over here. Oh, my mouse is, okay, we're gonna put a seven over here and just to make sure, yeah, that's correct, okay. So now we go to the next query and we are over here now. And so we need to ask ourselves, okay, so we're at a three. We need a three. What do we have? We have a four. Okay, well, a four is big enough to work. Perfect. So let's move this over here. And now let's update this value to not be negative infinity, but instead, whatever the sum is at index two. So at index two, it's seven. Yeah. And then we need a three, but we have a two, so that's too small. So we stop here again. Now we do the same thing. What, what's the index of the top, or what's the value of the top value? We need well, we need a one. So we're gonna binary search over here, and let me actually, yeah, it's fine. So we need a value that's one, or yeah, we need a value that's one or greater, which is all of these values. And so we would get the, we'd have that means we'd have to our range would be this whole thing now. And so in this whole thing, what's the maximum? Well, it's 10, right? And so this is gonna be a 10. Right, where's my mouse? Over here, okay. And so what's the index of this query? Well, this query was at index one. So we're gonna put this 10 here. Okay, now we're gonna go to this query. And we're gonna say, okay, we want this second number to be greater than a one or equal to a one. Well, that two works, okay, perfect. So now we're gonna update the corresponding value in our segment tree. And we're gonna look and that's at index three. So that's going to be this right here. That's going to be a six. And then what what value of i do we need or of the top value? Well, we need a four. And so four, there's only one value here, and so that's going to be over here. 
And so the only the only range we're going to be checking is this range right here. And so that's going to give you a six. And I think that's the answer is six, ten, seven. OK, so that's kind of how this algorithm works. You need a lot of these sort of so you need a lot of these things. And I, I guess I can write it down in one more time over here in like smaller font. So in like all the steps we need, let me actually clear up a little bit of space. Write it over here. OK, so we need to zip nums1 and nums2. Make it all bigger. And sort in ascending order. Then we need to zip nums2 and indices of those numbers and sort descending. Then we need to zip one more thing, right? So we need to get the queries. I'll make this bigger. OK, so we need to zip the queries where it's going to be. So it's going to be nums2, really, and query index and sort descending. And then for, we need segment tree for our sums. Okay, and then five, go through queries and get result. So that's gonna be like the process on how to do it. Definitely I would say rewatch the video for the explanation. It's definitely not super easy and I may have, you know, I didn't label things super well, but I think if you rewatched it, you would understand it and like work this out in small problem. Now let's actually go over how the segment tree works and why a segment tree is better than something else for this problem. And so I'm gonna do that now. Get rid of this. So let's actually go over what a segment tree is and how it's better. So first of all, let's say we had some numbers, right? Let's just say we had like nums. And let's say our numbers were, you know, one, two, three, four. And let's say what we wanted to do actually was just get, obviously this, this numbers thing is gonna get really big, but let's say we just wanted the sum of some subsequence here and it has to be a continuous subsequence. So let's say we just got this and we'd say like, okay, what's the sum? Well, so I did this in a lot of my other videos where the way you would do this is you would actually have a prefix sums. And the way the prefix sums work is you can actually compute the sum of all the numbers up to some point. So that would be like, you would have a zero to start off, but then but then you just go down. So this would be like one, then you just keep adding up. So three, six. So you just keep adding like the number you have to the, to the previous numbers. And now if you wanted some sequence like this, well, you can easily do that because you can get whatever this ends with minus this number here. So it would be six minus one, and that would give you five. And so that works as long as your numbers aren't updating, right? The problem is if your numbers are updating, that's not going to work because like, let's say I calculated this, but now I want to change this three to an eight. Well, how would that look? I'd have to change this number. I'd have to change this number. I'd have to change every number after that. And if I have to change like the first number, then I have to change this whole thing. And so that's going to be really expensive. So the problem with that is that doesn't really work for a changing changing array. But what does work is a segment tree. And so a segment tree is going to calculate our sum in log n. And it's also going to update in log n. So it's kind of like you have a sacrifice in both, you know, where the other way we can calculate in log 1. But if we change something, it would take n, n time to change it. So let's look. Let's show you what a segment tree would look like. And let's actually do it with this example right here, so this 4312. So we have a 4312. Okay. And so this is, uh, so the way it works is you have a range that you give it. And so, so this would be, and it's from the start to the end of the array. So this is zero to three. We can actually add one, no, this is fine. So this is zero to three. And so the first node of the segment tree is gonna be like that range. By the way, so a segment tree for sum and a segment tree for max, I'm going to show you the difference, but it's it's pretty similar where you can do a segment tree for sums or max or mins. They work kind of similarly. So we have some nodes, 0 to 3. Now what we do is we actually split up this range into two at every single node until the left and the right are equal. And the way we split it up is we're actually going to do left plus right over two. So like, you know, this might you may recognize as like a binary search. And then we're going to have a uh, then you get some middle. So this is going to be called middle. And then the way it works is it's zero to middle. 
for the left side and then middle to the right for the right side. So let me actually, yeah, let me actually draw this zero three over here so I have more space. Okay, so we have the zero three. So we're gonna split it up into, so if you divide three by two and it's gonna be a lower bound, so it's gonna be zero to one, two to three, right? Those are gonna be the two splits. And so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna have a zero one. We're gonna have a two three. Okay, now we're doing that again. So zero one is gonna split into zero zero and one one. And this is the base case, right? When the left equals the right. Okay, and then two three is gonna split into two two. And definitely could draw this better, but three three. Okay. And so now, I'll just show you how this would work for the max, but it would work pretty similarly to a sum. Instead of doing a max, you just do a sum. So now these, these base cases are actually the values in the array. So like this 0, 0 is actually array at index 0, and then this 1, 1 is at index 1, and so on. So this is 4, 3, 1, 2. And now that now that we made like these leaf nodes, what we do is we traverse up the tree and we just so because this is a maximum, we just get the maximum of like our two children nodes. So for here, the maximum would be a four, right? Four and three. Then here it would be two. And then the maximum of the whole thing would be four. OK, so that's what it looks like to make the tree. Now let's look what an update looks like. And then let's look what a um, like actually getting a range and getting the maximum of a range looks like. So let's say we want to update value like index two to, let's say we want to update that to, to a nine. How would that look like? And so it's pretty straightforward. We start at the root and we just ask, we just keep splitting and then we ask ourselves, where's this index two in, right? So we split into these two nodes and then we say, okay, is index two in zero one or in two three? Well, it's obviously in two three. So then we split it again. Is it in two two or is it in three three? Well, it's in two two. And then 2, 2 is our base case. So whenever we get the left and the right equals itself, that means we have to be at the index that we were looking for. So now we're going to update this to a 9. So now that we updated down, we also have to update back up to the root. So this node would be changed to a 9. And then this node would be changed to a 9. So that's how you update. So updates and um, and range, like range max or range sums are log n time. They're technically, uh, I'll show you why for the range sum. Uh, it can technically be in like, it's not quite log n, it's like a couple times log n, but it rounds down to log n. For the bigger trees, even though you do traverse like both sides of a tree sometimes, you don't traverse both sides very far. And so it's like 3 log n or 4 log n or something. But anyway, let's do a range sum, or a range max. So let's say we want a max, and let's have, let's have a range that we don't really have. So let's say we want a range maybe like, Okay, so we don't have a range. Okay, so let's say we want a range sum of zero to two, meaning starts at index zero and goes to index two. So how would we do this? And so the way it works is we have a left and a right again, and we do the split, and then we ask ourselves, okay, where where is our range? So when we do the split, we ask ourselves, okay, is zero to two in this? Well, part of it is, yeah. So then we is we ask ourselves also, is zero to two in this? Well, part of it is, yeah, as well. And so the the, the, most, the few conditions you have is if your whole range is in one of these subtrees, then you just return that subtree. And if your whole range is in none of the subtrees, then you return like negative one. And then if your whole range is in both of them, which it, in, in our case it is, right? Zero to two is in both of these. So this is zero to one, but we also have the two. So then you just return, if for a sum, you would return the sum of both of these. And for a max, you just return the max of both of these. So it's gonna go down both of these. And then for zero to one, well, we actually want this whole, so if zero to one, when we split it, it's actually in both of them, right? It's in zero and one. So here we would go down both. We would return both, and then we would get the max. So we would get this four, we would return it up here. And now for this two, three, we would uh, get, so this two, three, we actually want the two. And so we would return the nine. So th there would be a four here, and then this would go down this way and then it would return the nine. And so now we just get the max of the nine and the four, which is nine, right? And so if we look at our actual values, uh, how do we get, oh yeah, because because we, we updated this one to a nine, right? So if we wanted the max here, 
th this max would be a nine. So that's kind of how it works is sometimes it'll traverse down both subtrees, but it's not going to traverse like if this was really big, it's not going to traverse both subtrees all the way down. And so that's pretty much how a segment tree works. I would definitely encourage you, I'm going to show you the code and show you how it works. And I would definitely encourage you to code it up. And if you don't want to code that up, then you can just copy my code and then you can try to code up the rest. So let me show you the code now. Okay, so for a segment tree, you have the actual value of the segment tree. You have a left node and a right node, just like I drew in the picture. And then this L and R are the left and right bounds of the segment tree, right? So that's these right here, the zero three thing. Okay. And so what I actually did is I have a static method here to build the tree because sometimes I'm going to want to build a tree without actually having any nodes. And so really each node is a tree. So the other way I could do it was I could have a tree node, but instead I have a tree here. So what you can actually call this build without actually having an object tree. So you can just give it an array, a left and a right, and it will give you a new tree with a root with a static method, but you couldn't do that without a static method. And so this is pretty straightforward. So if, if you try to build a tree and the left is the, is the right, meaning like you try to build a tree with like two, two or something, well, then, then you'll only just have a root node. So then you just return the segment tree. And then so you get the middle, you get a root, and then you, you keep traversing down the root until you finally get. So the base case is when you get these leaves. So you keep traversing down the root and you keep making left and right children until you get these base cases where the left equals the right. And then to get the root value. So once you actually do get these nodes, you have to like populate the values back up. So you get the nodes and then you have to return the values to get the max and so on. Like I showed you in the picture earlier where you get these two values, you get the max here, you pop it, you you go up. You tr so you make all these nodes, then you traverse up and, and fill the tree. And so to build the tree is actually going to be order n. But I think, yeah, it's going to be order n. But it's not like n squared or anything. So, okay. And then update is also pretty straightforward. So this is our base case for the update. When we when the left is equal to the right, that means we're in a leaf node. So we update that value, and it's the same kind of thing. We update the value, and then we have to traverse back up. And the reason it's logarithmic is because we only update like one value. Like let's say we update this value, then we only traverse back up one branch of the tree. We don't traverse up the whole tree, and then we update everything along that branch. And then here's the range query. So it's the same kind of thing you want a base case where you, you have an initial range and then you just keep dividing the tree down. And so you're saying like you get a middle and you're saying, okay, if our left is greater than the middle, that means the range query is in the right side of the tree and not in the left. Or you can have the range query in the left side of the tree and not in the right. Or like I said, you have to get both of them. And so the way this would change for a sum, it would be pretty straightforward. Instead of all these maxes, you just have pluses. So this works for maxes and it works for mins and it works as pluses and it gets it in logarithmic time. So now let's go, let's go through the rest of the code. So we have this result because they're saying if you have no result, return negative one. So our standard result is just going to be a, an array of negative ones times the length of the queries. Then, like I said, the first part is we are zipping up numbers one and numbers two and we're sorting that in ascending order for numbers one like I showed here earlier where, you know, our numbers, it would be like one, two, three, four. And then the numbers below that would be, I guess I can actually like show that one more time. So when we actually are zipping them up and sorting them, it would be this. And this would be what? Um, nine, five. Mm, let's see. Did I do that right? Four, I think so. Uh, two. Yeah, so this is nums one sorted and this is nums two and this is this still has the same sequence as you can see in the picture. Okay, and then you have then you sort the zip nums twos with the index of the nums twos and they they actually just happen to be sorted already. And that's gonna be in descending order. So this nine five four two, which is from here with zero one two three. So that's gonna be sorted there. And then yeah, so you're gonna wanna sort all those. And then after that, you're going to want to sort the queries. And the reason, like I said, you want to sort the queries is because when we're going down these numbers to check, we want to be going down. We want to make sure that we only have to go down this thing once, right? So when we sort these queries in terms of the biggest numbers in the index, that's going to be like this, 5, 3, 1, 2, 1, 0. You want to make sure that when we're when we are looking at numbers to check and to update these segment tree numbers from negative infinity, we want to make sure we're doing it from biggest to smallest. That way, 
we only have to go through this thing once. Because if they were all over the place, we might need some other number that wouldn't work, right? Like if the, instead of this 531, it was like 135. Well, imagine what would happen, right? So if this was 135 instead, you would say, okay, I need a number like, so for one, I need anything that's greater than one. Okay, well, all of these would work. And now you'd 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 get to a three, and you'd be like, okay, well, I made all these non non um, non negative infinity, but actually for three I can't use a two, and for five I can't use uh, these. So that's why you got to be going descending because when you go descending, then you're guaranteed to keep adding to how many numbers you want to unlock, as opposed to just having random numbers. Okay, so that that part is that uh, sorted queries. And then this is the segment tree. So when you initialize a segment tree, you want to initialize, like I showed in the picture, you want to initialize all these to negative infinity. And that's going to be the length of, uh, that's going to be the length of this array because the, the most sums you can have is like each one of these is a sum. And so you can just figure out, okay, how many total numbers are here? And that's how many you have. So you were traversing down this along with our queries and we're unlocking numbers. And then when we unlock a number, that means that number is actually viable to use for a max because a max of negative infinity and in, in the number, it's always going to be that number. So we are unlocking the numbers, meaning we can use the bottom index and we're doing a binary search for the top index, right? So we're doing a binary search up here for these and then we are unlocking the numbers from the bottom because we can't sort the bottom separately and like unlock those because they have to be, they have to maintain a link. And so because we couldn't sort the numbers separately, well, we kind of could, but we have, we have to sort, we have to sort, uh, search, sort the, the range queries. Okay. So we make our segment tree and then we go through. So this is where we're going through the queries and it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, when, as if we can unlock a number, we unlock as much as we can, then we get a value and that's going to be the, the top value in the query. We actually don't need this print value. And then this is just a binary search through the top part to say like, okay, this is like what we can have or whatever. And then we get a range here, right? So this would be like one, uh, four or one, three. And then once we get a range, we can actually do the, we can ask for a range max in the segment tree in logarithmic time. And that's how we would actually solve the query. And so there is one, there are a couple actually, um, edge cases that I found. So one of the edge cases that I found is let's say you go through your queries and you didn't actually unlock any number, then your max here will return negative infinity. And so you wanna check for that. So, so that's what I wrote here. If you get a range query and you get negative infinity, then you want to append a negative one instead. Because yeah, you don't want negative infinities in your, uh, I guess what you could do technically to fix that issue. Yeah, and we can actually do that. So instead of these negative infinities, I think we can just have negative ones because all our numbers is positive. Let's just try that. And I think that then it wouldn't. So we can actually just do this directly, I think, now. Let's see. By the way, I was kind of skeptical. Oh, okay, we screwed something up. Uh, I'll put negative one. Oh, I see. So it, so it returned negative 1.0 um, instead of negative one, which is fixable. Oh, let's just fix that. Let's just make it an int. I'm sure it's probably in the segment tree somewhere where I did a divide and I didn't do an int divide or something. But let's just try that. Hopefully that'll work. If not, we'll just make it go back to the way it was. I mean, I'm not gonna spend too much time. Uh, okay, so it did work. And yeah, I, I don't think there's too many accepted submissions and they're all really different. So it's gonna be hard to beat other people. Like there's like 50 or hundred submissions or something. Anyway, so yeah, so that is all the code. Now let's go through the time and space complexity. It's gonna be definitely tricky. So let's think about it. Let's go through all of it. Okay, so like I said, to build the tree is gonna be and also, so the length of the queries and the length of the nums is 10 to the fifth. So I'm just going to treat that as the same number because worst case scenario, they're the same. And then that would be like two times one of them. So to build, like I said, it's going to take the, it's actually going to be O of N time where N is the length of the, uh, where N is nums length here. So that's going to be O of N already. N. 
Now, to get to actually get a range, that's going to be login. So to update and to get a range, that's going to be login. And then we actually have query queries. So this is going to be n login because if we have, you know, 10 to the fifth queries, then the the time complexity of an update is going to be log n, and then we have n updates. So that's going to be that. And then for all this kind of stuff, I mean, sort is n log n as well, which is the same. Like, that's why we can do sort, because we already have an n log n time complexity. Like, we can't really do worse or better, I think. So it's okay to do a sort. And also, you probably have to do a sort because you have to be, com like, because that saves you time because you can binary search through the stuff. So I think you, you have to do a sort. And so we sort. So that's going to be n log n. This is n log n as well. This is n log n. Making the segment tree is going to be n. Going through the queries is going to be n. And yeah, binary search through every single one is going to be log n. And so pretty much you just have like a bunch of n log n. So you might have like 5 or 10 n log n. But that's going to round down to n log n. Now the space is also going to be n log n. Uh, no, it's not going to be n log n. So for the space, so our segment tree is going to be n size because it's actually going to be, it's actually going to be two n times. And also when you look up these segment tree um, implementations, I made it with a tree, but you can actually make it with an array. Like if you're familiar with how a heap works, a heap is technically with an array. But the annoying thing is I can show you really fast, but pretty much it'll just be like you have some numbers like let's say you have one two three four so the way it's going to work is half of your half of your segment tree will be the original numbers and then the other half will be maxes so i think it's like you take the max of every two uh numbers right next to each other so i think it's like four two and then you take the maxes like over here or something it's like something like that i'm not exactly sure but yeah you can do it that way, and if you if you want to look at a heap implementation, it's kind of similar because it's like a completed tree, and so you can figure out like the children of a heap or something like if if you have a node at like node i, then like the children are at like two i and two i plus one or something. You can do it with an array. It might be like um, I do think it's a little bit harder to visualize than compared to a tree. Like I think looking at a tree is a little bit easier but the thing about a tree is you you have to be careful with all your left and right children and stuff you have to make sure you don't get null values so either one works and i think they're roughly the same time complexity so for space um so we do have the segment tree which is going to be order n it's going like i said it's going to be technically two times order n if you look at it because yeah i don't know if they still have this picture but yeah like you're gonna have n children, then n minus uh, n over two parents, and n over two and n over two, so that rounds down to two n. Then uh, let's see what else we have. So this build update, whatever. We're not making anything extra. And then yeah, in all these in all these uh, other zipped arrays that we're making, these are gonna be also um, order n. Like the sorted first is gonna be order n. Sorted second is gonna be order n. Sorted queries is gonna be order n. Uh, yeah. So this is just going to be uh, O of n. And I think what I will also do is I will provide this code just in case, like, let's say you don't want to actually build a segment tree on your own. You can copy my code, and then you can try to write the rest of the code yourself knowing kind of how a segment tree works. I think I talked about, like, the left and the right boundaries. Nums is just the array used to make it. The index and the value is, like, what index you want to update, what value do you want. And so you can, you can fill out the rest of the code if you don't want to look at how a segment tree works is definitely like the reason I said this was the hardest problem I've done so far is because even if you know how a segment tree works, if you just copy paste a segment tree code, there's still a lot, as you can see, like it's a hundred lines of code altogether. And there's a lot of stuff and definitely a lot of things you can screw up. So, but yeah, that's all for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. It was definitely a challenging one. And I guess that's why it was the first seven point problem we've seen. So, or at least I've seen, and you know, looking at these contests for like a month or two, and if you did like it, um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.